and immediately Magnus sacrifices change of shirt, change of play, change of attitude for Magnus Carlsen. Hikaru Nakamura, the Blitz Beast, is baffled at what's just happened because he's three games up in this Speed Chess Championship final against Magnus Carlsen 2023. Magnus is on the ropes, but then Magnus rips off his shirt, dons a new outfit and unleashes his superpowers on Hikaru in this exceptional game. More of that reaction to come after the sacrifice later, but let's check out these opening moves first. So this is September 23. We've got the clock times on the left there. Three minutes each plus one second gained back per move. That's called increment. Magnus goes for this Sicilian. We see knight f3, knight Knight c6 and bishop b5, the Rosalimo. For context, Magnus has lost four of the last five games and drawn one of them. Unheard of. So we see g6 from Magnus. He elects this line. Castles is played. Bishop g7 and c3. Hikaru prepares to set up the big white centre. Knight f6, provocative move, especially to the untrained eye. But if you gallop forward too soon with the pawn, probably pawns don't gallop, maybe knights do. But okay, if you march forward, well, this knight gallops into a home on d5. So it's playable for black. As such, rookie one played, the pawn just supported. We see castles, d4, and Magnus strikes right back. Anything you can do, I can do better, Hikaru, d5. He's fighting for the most important four squares on the board. Now, everyone and his dog plays e5 here, then knight e4. Tons of theory from there. But in this game, Hikaru goes for takes on d5. Five. A bit of a subpar move because queen recaptures and you're solving some problems. The queen is centralized. The center's under fire. The bishop's scope has been opened when e5 wasn't played. Now c4 is Hikaru's explosive follow-up move, but simply queen d6, Hikaru takes, and black has a good game. The most precise way to play is with queen takes on d1, followed by knight e4. You know, the rook will have been decoyed. That square will be th uh, free, three, free. And you'll open the bishop, you'll win back the pawn, black doing well. But Magnus takes here. So he doesn't take the queens off the board. You know, he's three games down. He wants to keep attacking complications. Hikaru develops. Very natural. And the queen cha-cha slides to the right-hand side of the board. The king side looking for an attack. And Hikaru says, come at me, bro, with this move, pawn to h3. Not good. His best was to actually give up the bishop, shatter the pawns here, then go bishop d4, challenge this strong diagonal, you know, once you've removed that knight. But not played. h3 on the board, rook d8 from Magnus, picking up a tempo against the queen. Hikaru plays the best move, blocking the attack and developing. But now look at this. Knight b4, Boy, you wish you eliminated that one sooner. It's looking at this very sensitive d3 square and c2 potentially in combination with bishop f5. And now Hikaru has got a real tough task on his hands. Queen b3, the preferred move of the Silicon Overlord. But what we see in the game is bishop d4. That same idea to centralize this wooden shield, as Hikaru would call it. Nice plan, but there's a problem. You can start with knight d3. Or you can do as Magnus does and smash through this king's defenses here. And this is where we get this awesome clip. Keep your eye on Hikaru's face here. Hikaru with bishop to d4, and immediately Magnus sacrifices the bishop Snapped. on h3. Change of shirt, change of play, change of attitude for Magnus Carlsen. What do we make of this? But it suddenly dawns on Hikaru as the game goes how powerful this attack is. Because after pawn recaptures, it's very difficult to arrange the defense. You know, knight h2, a common idea. Sorry, queen captures first. Now white to move. 
Knight h2, common idea, but then the bishop drops, of course. This knight could be coming in. Now, the absolute best move is c5, prepare, preparing bishop f1. I was about to say preferring, preparing. But that wasn't played. Hikaru missed it. Even after that, black's still doing well. You know, there's queen f5 ideas, supporting a light squared attack. Then that pawn on c5 could be tender if this one's ever traded off. So black was still doing well, decent attack. But bishop e5 played in the game. Hikaru trying to reroute, add defense, but look at this evaluation bar, plummet. It's now minus three, that's three pawns better for black. And look at the clock times. Magnus two minutes ahead. So he starts with knight d3. That is one octopus knight sitting on d3. Ala Gary Kasparov, very famous game. He once won against Anatoly Karpov in a world chess championship match with a knight on d3. So what does Hikaru do? Retreats this bishop to g3, says, please take my rook, take the exchange, help me consolidate, bring my queen to f1. No such luck. This is sadistic. Knight to h5. What a move. Opening the scope of this sniper on b2, threatening to shatter these uh, pawns here, you know, the king side. There's even threats of knight f4 and then checkmating with the queen on g2. What to do? Hikaru barely with any time. He goes knight g5, trying to randomize. The queen retreats back to f5 here. Now knight g to e4, you know, it was attacked by the queen. It does hold this bishop, but Magnus, with many good moves, finds this precision continuation. Takes on g3. No time for knight recaptures or the queen crashes through with check, supported by the octopus. And of course, here you're getting killed. You're attacking and you're not even material down. So pawn recaptures, of course, played. And now again, lots of good moves, but I love this one. Pawn to a6. Magnus using both sides of the board as his canvas. He uh, forces the bishop back to a4 here and then takes on b2. Forking the lady and the queen's bishop. Uh, actually, that was the king's bishop. Now we see the queen move. The bishop is captured here. Queen recaptures and bishop takes on a1. So Magnus does win an exchange, but also a pawn. And he's liquidating pieces. And here's the nice thing at the end of the tail. Queen e5. Look at that scorpion flicking its tail down on the rook. The rook sidesteps to d1 to cover this knight because, yes, f5 is coming the knight stumbling back and now there's a very very simple tactic for guys of this level with a minute on the clock but it shows magnus was not in form because he misses this move how should you play here to basically finish the game on the spot so well done if you found rook takes on d2 Here's the point. Rook recaptures, you land the check, king goes, pick up the rook, you've got an exchange for a knight, plus a million extra pawns, right? Three extra pawns. Game over. But Magnus misses it. He takes on g3 with check. Also natural, also a good move, but not as precise. Queen c3 threatens this piece twice. So queen b3, now if takes, of course, you're going to win the queen. If queen takes, well, you're just giving a queen for a rook and a knight. Not good. So takes here. Yes, repairs the pawns, but now rook d4. Magnus doubling. No time for knight f3 or you lose the rook. Actually, no, you don't because the knight's defending. Okay, but you start liquidating. So king e2 played. Rook ad8 doubles on the file. Now we see knight f3. Too much pressure there. So Magnus captures. The knight recaptures. And this is a great move. Instantly played. Flicked out. E5. So astute to the tactics, these guys. I mean, I know he missed this one. But he doesn't need asking twice for this. If captures, will you skewer that uh, knight to king? Winning a piece. So 
pawn untouchable, knight c3 played, heading for d5, e4 on the board, knight e5, king g7, knight d5, g5, king e3, and now Magnus puts the finishing touches on this stunning game, and just before the final move, if you've loved this video, please do hit like, massively helps me out, and consider subscribing if you too want to be as good as Magnus Carlsen through endless epic chess videos. The final move played in this position was pawn to h5. Hikaru resigns. Why? Magnus is threatening pawn h4 as I'm drawing here and then he will set up the dreaded bathtub pawn formation. No one can survive that onslaught of pawns. But in all seriousness, this is too much. You're going to have to start shedding minor pieces to stop the advance of pawns. Hikaru down on the clock. He says, you know what? Throw in the towel. Let's get to the next game. I hope you enjoyed this one. And for another truly sensational game from this very match between these two guys, have a look at the video on screen next. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.